Hello, class. So we'll be looking at the uh, similar triangles here today. All right. So in, in case of similar triangles, we realize we realize that the sides are in proportion. So in fact, CA is equal to ten. So the entire thing is equal to ten right over here. And CE is equal to six from here to here. And we we'll, are uh, CB is equal to three. So it becomes double. And ET, in fact, the ratio is then 3 to 10, small portion to the big portion, it has to be equal to 6 to 6 plus x, the entire thing would be 6 plus x. Now then when uh, we can cross multiply, or since we're going to get doubled on each side by the ratio, this must be equal to 20, which tells us that x must be equal to 14. All right. Now here, uh, PB is equal to 7, and AD is equal to 10, and AT equals 5, and they want you to find out the BC. Now, yes, I understand we can try to simply uh, make the ratio 5 to 7 equals 10 to x, but we're just going to stay with the uh, uh, side of the uh, corresponding uh, uh, triangles here. We're looking at 5, 2, 5 plus 7 is equal to 10, to 10 plus x. Then we get to realize since it doubles, this one also has to double of this one, which means uh, this one is also equal to double of 12, 24. So therefore, 10 plus x must be equal to 24, and x must be equal to 14. Now here we have uh, in a triangle, so we don't have a triangle, so we're just going to construct one. Let us say something like this. Now, then we have uh, AC, and then I'm going to call this one as B because. DE has to be par parallel to AC, so let us say, oops, somewhere right over here. And then D is on the point of AB, and E is on BC, so that's what we have. And DB is equal to uh, 2 and DA is equal to 7. Now, and then DE is equal to 3. And the question is, what is the length of AC? Once again, we have to realize that 2. Uh, 2 to 9, the entire thing, is equal to 3, which is the small side of the smaller triangle, and the entire thing for the big triangle will be x. So what we can do is we can cross multiply, we can get 2x is equal to 27, where x equals 13.5. Alright, here we have uh, AE is equal to 3, and ED is equal to 6, and DC is equal to 15, and then we we'll have to find the length of EB, we'll call it as x. So once again, 3. The entire thing, which will be equal to 9, that's equal to x to 15. So, of course, what we're going to do is, we can cross multiply if you want to, or you will realize that the upper portion is a third of the bottom one, a third of the 15 becomes x must be equal to 5. Either way is fine. Now, here we have ac, which is equal to x minus 3. And then BE, which is equal to 20, and AB, which is equal to 16, and AD, the entire thing is 2x plus 2. Then, in fact, the ratio which we have set up is uh, 16 over entire thing, which is 36, has to be equal to x minus 32, entire thing, which is 2x plus 2. 
Now, then what we can do is we can cross multiply them. We'll end up getting 36x minus 108, which will be equal to 32x plus 32. Then when you subtract 32x and we end up getting 4x and these two things cancel out and when we add up 108 on each side then we end up getting 140 so therefore x by dividing by 4x must be uh, 35 Now, then AC becomes 35, but you have to subtract 3, so therefore, AC will be equal to 32. Now, let's look at number 147. So here, CE is equal to 25. And then, uh, AD is equal to 18. And DV is equal to 12. And find the length of EB. So we don't we're gonna call this one as x, the nearest tenth of an inch. Now so the re a ratio which you can set up is x over twenty-five, which is equal to twelve. Or rather, uh, that's right, we can do this one this way, but we're gonna just make it the length of the whole side at a good practice. X plus twenty-five is twelve over 30 because 12 plus 18. Now then we're going to just cross multiply then we're going to end up getting 30x is equal to 12x plus 300. Now then we get to realize that here we have uh, 18x is equal to 300. Then x will be equal to simply 300 divided by 18, which will be equal to simply 150 over 9. So 150 over 9 simply becomes when you uh, try to calculate this one, we get uh, 1. Uh, 16.66666 so we end up getting we're going we're gonna to write it as 16.7 all right let's continue now ac is equal to 10 and at is equal to 18 and then ct is equal to 22 Then we are looking at parallelogram uh, C D uh, O G. Now, but the thing is, all these are midpoints, so therefore, by mid segment theorem, uh, by the similar triangle, we get the half half of the uh, value that we actually would have had. So here is 11. This becomes 11. Here is 5, half of 10. This will be also 5 because of the opposite side. Now, then here we end up getting. Uh, Two times eleven plus five, which will be equal to thirty-two. All right, here, uh, perimeter of the big triangle is thirty-six. That means each side is equal to twelve. Now, what is the length of the centimeters of EF? EF is the. This would have been also twelve, so half of that becomes six. All right, now next. Since AC is equal to 4x plus 10, and these are the midpoints, that means by the similar triangle between 2 to 1 ratio, we get to realize that this must be half of this one. So instead of 4x, we would have had a 2x. Instead of 10, we would have had a 5. Choice 2 becomes our answer. Alright, here we have DE is equal to 7, 
AB is equal to 10 and BC is equal to 13. Then find the perimeter of the triangle ABC. In fact, since this is 7, then if you go out, uh, outwardly, this would have been equal to 14. So we end up getting perimeter becomes 13 plus 14 plus 10, which would be equal to 37. Now AD is equal to 10, and BC equals 14, and AC is equal to 16. Find the perimeter of the triangle by the following the midpoint. Then we will have something that looks like this, where this portion becomes parallel to 16 makes 8, here 7 opposite of, or parallel to 14, and this is parallel to 16, and this will be parallel to 5. So when you add up these three line segments, we'll end up getting 20. Now this is actually a pretty good question. In uh, between two similar triangles, what do you realize? Yes, let's just organize that for a second quickly. Uh, between two similar triangles, yes, the ratio of the size can be yes. If that is simply A to B, a perimeter, which is collection of size, It will still be A to B. It doesn't change, but the area will be A square to B square. But the angles, this is a tricky one, angles will be simply one to one because angles have to be the same. Now, knowing that in our minds, since the corresponding uh, a ratio of the corresponding size is two to one, which one is not true? Now, angles has to be, no matter what, the same, not uh, 2 to 1, because angles has to be kind of one, therefore our answer will be choice number 4. Here, uh, length find the ratio of 2 to 1, that means the perimeter has to be the same. Here, the ratio of the uh, line segment is 3 to 2, then yes, angle cannot be 3 to 2, angle actually has to be 1 to 1. Now, here, uh, this is in fact a bit tricky, but given that these are written in corresponding manner, A corresponds to Z, and B to X, and C to Y, the fact that I'm looking for angle X, that means I'm looking for angle B. Now, since the measure of two angles in the first triangles are 50 and 30, which add up to 80, then angle, angle B, measure of angle B must be equal to 100 which tells us that a measure of the angle X also has to be 100. Choice number four. Here, we, when we set up the ratio, then we end up getting 7X to four, which would be equal to seven to X. Now, then, uh, in fact, we end up getting, by we can cross multiply, we get seven X squared is equal to 28, and x squared is equal to 4, then this x has to be plus or minus 2, but we cannot have negative 2, so our answer will be 2. Now that's the length of a, oh, I'm sorry, 2 is the x value, so then a length of a, b, will be 7x. So therefore, our final answer becomes 14. All right. Between two similar triangles, angles has to be the same, so we're going to write it as 4x plus 30 is in fact equal to 5x plus 10. Then when we solve for x, x will be equal to in fact 20. Here we have, uh, having the proportion, so x plus 2, 2, x plus 6. That ratio has to be equal to x to 4. So when you cross multiply, we get 4x plus 8. And 
has to be equal to x squared plus 6x. Then when you bring everything on to the other side, you get x squared uh, plus 2x by subtracting 4x from each side, minus 8. Then here we get, uh, by factoring, x plus 4 times x minus 2. Then here we get to realize that x must be equal to 2. Because x being negative 4 wouldn't work out here, because it would give us the negative side. So therefore, x equals 2, and then determine the length of AB. AB is in fact equal to then 2. Here we have, okay, so since this is 6, this, this is 8, we get to realize that the opposite side, the hypotenuse, would be equal to 10 by the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now, then uh, by setting up the ratio, uh, we're going to call this ratio as AC, hypotenuse AB. In fact, uh, it will be the same ratio as AD small line segment of the small left triangle to those uh, AC. Uh, later on, we're going to call this one as a toothpaste method because uh, if you to turn this triangle over, If I have to bring this triangle over here, and then turning it around, you get to realize that AC times AC, in fact, the ratio that we know is simply this side times that side. And then AD is the same side line segment uh, over uh, uh, AC. Uh, AD is the same side line segment, and then uh, AB is the entire one. In fact, when you multiply AC times AC, that means we're going to multiply those two. And AB times AD will be the bottom one. How does this look like a, a toothpaste? Uh, simply bring this one over. It's kind of silly, but if you to just make the brush mark. It looks like a toothpaste coming down, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so therefore, here the equation becomes 6 squared, which means this side times the same thing, which is uh, cross, cross multiplication, is equal to x times 10. So therefore, 10x is equal to 36. Then x will be equal to 3.6. All right, once again here, we're going to have toothpaste method. That side times that same side is equal to same side line segment times the entire thing. So we get 12 squared is equal to AD, which is we call, we're going to call it as X times 36. So 144 is equal to 36X. That makes X to be equal to simply this. Yes. We end up getting uh, 4. So 4 becomes AD. All right, here we have length of BD. Let's call this one as X. Then same way, same way we get 6 squared is equal to X times X plus 5. Because you have to get the entire thing. Then we end up getting 36 is equal to X squared plus 5X. Then 0 is equal to minus 36, and we can in fact factor this one as an x plus 9, x minus 4. So then we get to realize that x has to be equal to 4, because it cannot be negative value, so choice 4 becomes our answer. 
All right. So, uh, PD. In fact, in case of PD, this one is uh, we call it smiley face because the ratio. Between those so for example let me first write up the ratios and then I'm going to turn this picture around like this way the ratio becomes BD BD over CD must be equal to AD over BD by the similar triangle ratio uh, then when you cross multiply them you will realize that once again interestingly uh, BD times BD which is these two line segments is equal to left side which is the AD times CD so if you're to rewrite it then uh, two vertical line two heights right a uh, product of that has to be equal to left side times the right side okay? Yes, it looks like it looks like a little bit of smiley face. Yeah, I know it's kind of silly, but anyway, to memorize, I guess. So we have this is uh, seven. This is then therefore becomes nine. Then x therefore x squared must be equal to seven times nine. So therefore x must be equal to then uh, three square root of seven after simplifying it. All right. Here we end up getting uh, CD. We, we can call this one as X once again. Then X squared must be equal to 3 times 4. Then X must be equal to 2 squared root of 3. Here we're going to, uh, they want you to find the uh, length H. Now then we have to find that A or B first. Let's go for A. Then by the toothpaste method, 3 squared is equal to B times 5. Then B will be equal to 9 over 5. When B is equal to 9 over 5, then A can simply become the entire thing, which is 5 minus 9 over 5. When you simplify this one, this will be equal to 16 over 5. Then H will be equal to H squared, then is equal to 9 over 5 times 16 over 5. Then H will be equal to, after you calculate that, denominator is the 5, and this becomes 12 over 5. Here, uh, how do we know if these two triangles are similar? They say RPT, RPT, this angle is uh, congruent to R, that's Q, but you will realize that R was the same between two, so we end up getting angle, angle. All right here we have CAD. This angle is congruent to CED, and guess what? We have two vertical angles that are congruent to each other. So therefore, once again, AA method will be uh, the way to prove these two triangles to be congruent. Now, here we have since PS is uh, parallel to QR, then what we get to realize is that this. Uh, this angle will be congruent to uh, this angle by the alternate interior and then the next one will be a uh, vertical so therefore we get to have air angle angle once again now here we actually have to uh, show them these two triangles are congruent so what we can do is we can try to just write this one up statement and reasoning so first will be the given that means I'm gonna write all these things up to here into the given now a second one then since AB is per perpendicular to B, uh, BE and then BE is perpendicular to uh, BE, so we get to realize angle B and angle ER are 
right angles. And the second one is because perpendicular lines form right angles. Now, every statement right after that is then I get to realize angle E is congruent to angle E because all right angles are congruent. All right, statement number four. And since these two are congruent angles, and they already told us BFD, the outer angles are congruent, then we get to realize inner angles also must be congruent too, such as angle D, F, C is congruent to angle A, C, D. Because yes, statement number four will be supplementary angle two congruent angles are congruent. Now uh, we can just write it in this way, or uh, if you'd like to be more complete, then uh, between step number three and four, you could have also write down angle. DAF, these two are in fact supplementary to the angles that which we just talked about earlier from the given. And then uh, due to their linear pair, you could also write it in that way also. And then writing the supplementary angles, the congruent angles are congruent. All right. Therefore, we get to set up the two, uh, two pairs of the angles are congruent. Number five. And we have, since both pairs, you can write down triangle ABC must be similar to triangle uh, DEF. Now, uh, statement number five will be angle angle. Now, even though that's the end of the uh, uh, proof for this question, but we could have gone a bit farther. So, for example, number six could have been we can set up the two of corresponding size in a way that AB, let us say, over BC is in fact equal to uh, DE to FE. Now, the reasoning, yes, uh, corresponding size Sides are in proportion all right and then you can say uh, a b is a b times f e is equal to d e times BC. And then we can write down product of means product of means is equal to product of extremes. And that can be nice addition too. The proof that which we just talked about. Now, number 142, and in this case, uh, you can just write it of similar manner as to the previous question. We're just going to talk about two angles that are congruent. Angle A was the reflexive angle, and then angle ACB, which is this angle, is in fact congruent to ABE. With that, we can say those two triangles must be similar to each other. All right, with this, we'll just wrap it up. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.